morning, we'd like to welcome you. Amen. 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 Well, it's good to be here today. I ask you to bow your heads with me for a quick minute. Let's bless this service. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come before you. We thank you for this day. 
We thank you for bringing us together, Lord God. I just pray right now that your presence and your power will fill this place, that your anointing will come, Lord God, that you'll break every yoke, you'll break every chain, everything that's holding us bound, Lord God, everything that's holding us back, and that we'll just come to know you greater and greater and serve you more and more. In Jesus' name, and everybody that agreed said, Amen. We'll turn to a couple people and say, it's great to be in God's house. Walking around 
Okay, our scripture today is Psalms 9, 1 through 2. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy mar marvelous works. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. Uh, the Lord wants our whole hearts, not it wants to be our, our whole hearts. Okay, uh, coming up, we uh, June the 12th, that's next Saturday. We have a ladies' meeting at 930. We're going to meet up at Panera Bread, and all ladies are invited. And then next Sunday is uh, Chuck Wagon Breakfast and Baptismal Sunday. And then uh, June 19th is the men's meeting at 930, and I think that's here. And then, um, let's see what else we have here. Oh, okay, we have a corporate prayer every Sunday at uh, 930 in the foyer. And we have uh, Wednesday nights at 6.30, we have a uh, Bible study. And so uh, right now we'll go ahead and release the kids. And then uh, I'll turn it over to uh, Bobby. Oh, okay. Uh, he wants me to do the, he'll do the offering, but he wants me to let you know that the, we have, uh, you can go to BrazosValleyCowboyChurch.org or you can go to the QR code on the bulletin and give that way also. Okay. All right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Can you get it? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, which way do you want it? Good morning. Hey. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? I tell you what, it's uh, good to have Mark here today. And I'm going to tell you what, today just come expecting a miracle and, and God to meet you where you're at. And, and whatever you pray for, believe and trust God that he's going to be able to meet it because he is in the blessing business. And if we're faithful servants to the Most High, he's going to be faithful giver and merciful to each and every one of us. Isn't it good, Mark, each day it says his mercies are renewed every day. And really, I, I, I can say moment by moment his mercies are renewed, moment by moment. If you look around at times that a uh, uh, couple of times here in the last couple of months, I could have been involved in some serious accidents and just all of a sudden just, uh, you know, God just diverted the attack of the enemy on us. And this morning it's going to be great to just to have a time to give to the Lord and to, to just uh, really stretch out our faith and trust him in what he's blessed us with today. And uh, I've just really been praying and, and asking the Lord for a direction to go in with our church. And, and guys, I think we're on the horizon of really reaching out and going in some really great directions. And uh, Pastor Will's just taking a week off on a vacation. And, and uh, just, I tell you what, I believe when it comes back, we're going to go forth. You know, man, we're... God's given me a vision, Brad, that we're like a we're like a lighthouse on a hill out here, and, and people are going to be drawn to us. And, and uh, each and one, each and every one of us, reach into ourselves and find out, God, what what would you have me to do? What is my gifting? What is my talent? And bring it in to to the body here. And so, as people come in, we can share, we can show them the strength and the love of the God. Because Mark, as you're you're going to be preaching here in a little while, and what is it about? It's about trusting God and to come in to the hurt, wounded. We're we're a soul hospital here. Amen. You know, we're a soul hospital, and people are coming in hurt and injured and wounded and everything. And uh, and what do we want to do? We want to get them healed up. We want to uh, exercise our faith and, and that their faith can be exercised and grown and see the mighty hand of God to work. You know, this morning as, as it's time to give our tithe and offering and everything, I just went before the Lord and Will always says when he starts out, God loves a cheerful giver. You know, he loves a cheerful giver. Man, thank you God that I'm, that at least wait, I've got enough, uh, I've got something that I can give. You know, he's, it might not be nothing but like one little boy uh, came to the came to the rodeo and he said, hey, I want to start tithing y'all's ministry. We were looking for an answer. God, you really want us to, you know, to go. And I think I shared this before. And y'all really want us, because we were having a good time going to high school and youth rodeos. And and uh, Pistol Robson came up and his dad was there. We were talking. He said, okay, Pistol, tell uh, uh, Mr. Davis here what God told you. He's not supposed to tithe to you. 
and uh, I went, praise God, his granddaddy was there, and he was a pastor of Assembly of God Church there in Stephenville. He said, well, what about me? He said, Papa, God didn't tell me to tithe to you, you know? <laughs> and and uh, so you know what it was? It was like $3.50, you know? And uh, I went, well, that's a good start. So when Pistol left, you know, I told Daryl, I said, well, and then the next rodeo he came, I think it was $5 or something. He was riding calves or steers. I said, you know what, Daryl, this is really good. I said, but, man, I, we got to get him some bigger rodeos if we're going to go for very much further. You know, he said, well, one day when he makes the NFR and wins a world, you know, about 200000 I said, hey, we're going there, you know. And, uh, but anyway, though, you know, it's, it's uh, good to give back to God. And, and one of the things we've shared this before in, in giving that uh, God wants our faithfulness and he wants to bless us. And when we do give to God, then, uh, Brian, he's going to bless the other part. That he that he that we set back for ourselves. We give God our tenth tithe is the first ten percent of the fruit of the field of what God has blessed us with. And then see that God says, see that I don't pour open a blessing and the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing for you that I, that your what your barns. Everybody say barns will not be able to contain it. How many of you guys want your barn overflowing? Well, how many of you guys want your finances overflowing? How many of you want your home over uh, flowing over? I do. And it says, press down, shaking together. I used to haul grain. And, and one of the things, Larry, you can do is have a trailer full of cotton seed, and, man, it's overflowing. You ain't got 20,000 pounds on it. You're getting weighed by the tonnage, you know. And that trailer holds about 50,000 pounds. Well, how many guys you know you got a trailer full of uh, 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 cotton seed up there, but you ain't got 10,000 pounds. you got to get up there and stomp and stomp and romp and stomp and then put more in there. And, and, and you've got to do that for about three or four hours just to get 50,000 pounds. So, see, I could have been satisfied with 10,000 and gone to, gone to the uh, port and, got, and dumped. I'd have got about $500. But any better when I'd got pulled into that port about 50,000, I'm walking out there with about $3,000 in my pocket. So see how it is, and I can, and we can relate to that, Jay. Shaking together, pressed down, overflowing. Don't be satisfied with where you're at. Put God to the test and see that he doesn't pour. And if you're watching online, we suggest that to you, too. If you're needing something, give to God. See what God, and say, God, I'm giving it cheerfully, I'm giving it to you, because I'm expecting a return on this. Because your word says this, the word of God never lies. It never lies. This is true today as it was from the very beginning, and when the last dust settles and the smoke clears one day, it's still going to be standing. Nothing else is but the Word of God. So we put God to the test. If you guys will rise and, and stand up, get your checks. You can make them out to Bradson Valley Cowboy Church. You can give. Give to the Lord and see that he doesn't bless you because it says, press down. Will a man rob me? No, I won't rob you. But I just can't give to you. God, well, we don't. So I just believe everybody here today, because this is good ground, it says show, sowing the good ground here in a couple of months. I'm going to be preparing my ground for uh, fertilizing and plowing and planting seeds so I can have some uh, harvest of oats and wheat this year. So when I start getting cattle in, they're going to be able to eat. And uh, But if I just go out there and leave my ground like it is and put some oats on the ground and hope they come out, they're going to come up a little bit, but it's not going to be very much. So we're sowing into good ground here at Brass Valley Cowboy Church, and uh, every dollar you give is going out to save lives, to, to, to just further the kingdom of God here in the Brazos Valley. Father, I just thank you for this day, and we just give you all praise and all glory and all honor, Father God, because you're so worthy, worthy as the lamb that was slain for each and every one of us. Father, that, uh, that uh, the needs will be met. Every dollar, every penny that's given here today, Father God, that you would bless the giver and the sower, Father God. Lord, we just lift up the name of Jesus today. We place the name, the word, and the blood of Jesus over our finances, over everyone's finances here, over the, the band's finances, praise and worship team, Father God, over their finances. We pray you bless them. And Father, over each and every one of us in our church, Father, that you would bless us and let us just be a, a, a drawing point, Father, here that we can... Uh, be an outreach to our community and to those that are hurting. In Jesus' mighty name, everyone said amen. Hey, if you guys will remain standing, we're going to do our declaration here. You know, huh? Declaration. Declaration. Yeah, declaration, proclamation that, that, uh, and that we're declaring that, uh, that we're going to be thanking God for jobs and everything that's up there. We're thanking him. And so if you guys, y'all ready?
Let's go. Thank you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, income and rebate, return to accounts and dividends, dividends and surprises, debt cancellation, bills decreased, bills paid off, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of our financial needs all our church's financial needs so that we will have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever. Everybody said amen. Guys, we started doing that about a year ago and it is amazing. It is amazing what God has done here. to introduce uh, a friend, a cousin, a relative, mighty man of God, just all the above and everything. Mark, he's been here, man, for a long, long time, in and out, and, and uh, uh, him and his wife, Mary, I'll tell you what, they're just as much a part of us as, uh, as we've been here. I mean, you guys have been here as long as we have, you know, so right now I want to introduce uh, Mark Phelan. How many of you guys heard Mark before? Amen. You guys haven't? I tell you what, get ready because I tell you what, anything can happen. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Boy, that's pretty hot. Amen. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, I enjoy myself every time I come here. Amen. Amen. It's, uh, it's just good to come back to what we considered home for so long. And it feels just like home still. And I thank y'all for making it feel that way to us. Amen. Amen. Well, I want to talk to you a little bit today about the new wine. You know, how many of you like wine? Never mind. Don't, don't ask me. <laughs> the new wine. I want to start with a, with a passage that everybody's familiar with, and it's uh, Psalms 23. Amen? It says here, The Lord is my shepherd. We all know it. I shall not want. You say it with me if you like. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'll tell you what, that is one of the... One of the most peaceful psalms when you're having some issues in life, when you're having some troubles, when you're kind of un, uh, concerned about some things, you can read that because God is your shepherd. He will never fail. Amen. And I, I just want to key in on something real quick here. He says here in verse number five, he says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Now think about that. I, I've, I've read over that scripture several times, and I heard somebody say something about it, and it just, like a light, it came on him. You prepare a table for me, where? 
in the presence of my enemies. Amen. How many of you have ever thought of that? God has prepared this table, and he's saying to you, no matter what's going on in your life, whatever enemy is assailing you, I've got a table prepared for you. No matter what kind of conflict you're having in your relationships, come sit at my table. Amen. No matter what's going on in your health, come sit at my table. I've got a table prepared for you in the presence of your enemies. No matter what enemy is assailing you. And that's just so comforting me. Come sit at my table because I've given you all you need pertaining to life and godliness. Amen. It's at my table. But you got to come sit at my table. Amen. He says whenever you have these issues and you're being tempted, you don't think you're being tempted beyond what you can bear because I've got a table prepared. I won't let you be tempted beyond your ability. Just come sit at my table. Have you ever thought about that? We struggle so much. We fight and we, we toil and we try to make things happen for ourselves. And God is just saying, will you please just come sit at my table? Just come sit at my table. And it's, it's, it's just, it's amazing to me. So what is at this table? What is at the table that God has prepared for us? In Isaiah 25, 6, he says this, And on this mountain shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wine on the lees, of, of fat things full of marrow, of wine on the lees well refined. Amen? Now think about something here. When they brought an animal sacrifice, where did the fat things go? Where did the good things go? Where did they go? They went to the Lord. They were sacrificed to the Lord. But God is saying to you, come, I've got a table prepared for you, and I'm going to give you my servant. I'm going to give you what I usually get. Just come sit at my table. Just come sit at my table. I love it. You see, he says in Nehemiah 8.10, he says, Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat, Drink the sweet wine. Send portions to everyone who has nothing ready, for the day is holy unto our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Come sit at my table. Rejoice in the presence of your enemies. I love it. In the presence of, you know, that's why Paul could say, I rejoice in my tribulation. In the presence of my enemies, God has prepared a table for me. And it's just an awesome, awesome thing. You know, the second thing he says in here, what else is at the table? It says wine on the lees. And it says finely or well refined wine on the lees. Amen. Now, there's, a, there's something about wine on the lees. You see, in the dictionary of the Bible, it says wine on the lees means a generous, full-bodied liquor. It said before wine was consumed, it was necessary to strain off the lees. Such wine was then termed well refined. Now, what are lees? Lees are the dead yeast that settle at the bottom that cause the wine to be fermented. You know, there's a lot of questions in the Christian community today about whether the wine was alcoholic or whether the wine didn't have alcohol in it. It was just grape juice. But, you know, the thing is, God is come calling you to know <laughs> he's using fermented wine on the lees, well aged. Amen? Now, now, why does that matter? You see, it says here, any full-bodied wine has 13 or 5% more alcohol in today's language. It is a alcoholic beverage. Amen? Now, do you abuse it? No. We don't need to abuse it. But it's for joy, it's for celebration and festivity, expressing the blessings of God. And it was used throughout the Old Testament and New Testament all the time. There's no question about it. And I, and I wanted to research some of this stuff, and, I, and I'm going to tell you why in just a second. But it says right here, we celebrate what's already happened. How many of you celebrate something before it happens? You know, your birthday's already happened. You celebrate it. You're, you get married. You don't put the party before the marriage. It's after the marriage. You, you celebrate after the fact. Amen? Now, many biblical scholars argue consistently and clearly that not only does the wine of the Bible contain alcohol, it's uh, maintaining firm, uh, unfermented grape juice would be virtually impossible. And why is that? You know, this, this, this scholar here, is, uh, he's an interpreter, and this is the one who said all this. But I, I'm not real concerned about that. There, there's no such thing as grape juice without intervention, which is pasteurization, okay? Now, the wine was alcoholic. That's my, my only point. It was, it, it was an alcohol-filled wine for celebration. 
Now I'll say this, Christians should exercise caution with wine and strong drink, practice in moderation and self-control. And toward one another, it is important that we allow for liberty without passing judgment for either drinking or abstaining. Some people get on to you for abstaining. You know? No, neither one. Now I'm, I'm going to show you a little bit here. Because some can drink to the glory of God and some can abstain to the glory of God. In Romans 14, 1 and 4, it says, Receive one who is weak in the faith. This, this intrigued me when I read this. It, it really did. I want you to look at this very carefully. Do not receive the one who is weak in faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. For one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Now that's, I, I, I just don't run over that. Listen to that. It goes on. He says, let him who eats despise him who does not, not despise him who does not eat, and let him who does eat not eat judge him who eats. For God has received him. Who are you to judge another man's servant? For his master is only stands or falls, and indeed he'll stand, because God's able to make him stand. But my point is, one serves God by not eating meat and gives glory to God. One serves God by and, and, and gives God glory by his eating. Same way with the, 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 the drinking. And my, my whole point, wine is for celebration. Amen? Aged wine was used, and it looks backwards. You're always celebrating when, you, when, you're, when you're drinking aged wine. Amen? But God's doing something new. Okay? God's doing something new in life. And I'm going to knock this whole table down. And then I'll be doing something new here. <laughs> He's doing something new. We've got some new wine, guys. God is doing some new things. He's doing some new things. He says here in Isaiah 43, 19, Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not? It springs forth. Don't you see it? Can't you see it? I'll make a way in the wilderness. I'll make rivers in the desert. I'm doing something new. You're still drinking your old wine. Amen? But God wants you to get the new wine. Amen? Listen, Jesus said this. He said, I'll ask the Father, and he'll give you another helper. He'll be with you forever, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. You know, in the very beginning, when the whole thing came about, don't tell me you're going to start that. <laughs> Acts, in Acts, we read the story of when, when, when the disciples were gathered all in the upper room and they were praying in one accord and the Holy Spirit fell down and they began to speak in tongues and then they went outside and they began to preach the word of God and people from all kinds of languages and all kinds of backgrounds and all kinds of tongues were hearing their, their, the gospel of Jesus Christ in their own language and some were glorifying God because of it. But then there were those who were marking and immediately when the Holy Spirit fell, it was likened to wine. It just, it, it, they're filled with wine. They're filled with new wine. In the media, from the very beginning, the Spirit of God was likened to wine. And he goes on, it says here, Jesus told this parable. He said, the disciples of John came to him saying, why do, your, what do, you, uh, do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples don't? Your disciples don't fast. And Jesus said to them, can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they'll fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch tears away from the garment, and a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins. If it is, the skins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed, along with the wine, right? And he said, but new wine is put into new wineskins, so that they're both preserved. Amen? You know, this is an important passage because if you, you find it, you'll find that it's in Mark chapter 2, verse 18 and 22, and also in Luke chapter 5, verse 33 through 39, and they're almost all identical. That's very rare. Uh, you know, when, when somebody tells a story, they may get a little bit of a different twist on a story, but, but Luke and Mark and Matthew, they all have the same story with the same points. And I think that's very important because new wine has to be put into new wine skins. Now, if we dig a little deeper on this uh, and using the Strong's Concordance for new in those instances, then when it says new wine, the new there is neon. 
It means new in time. Amen? But whenever you see new wineskins, it's canis, which means new in quality. Now, there's a big difference there. New in time, new in quality. Now, new in quality can be new in time as well, but it doesn't have to be. Amen? And that's good news for us. How many of you feel like old wineskins? <laughs> I've, been, I've been walking with the Lord for a long time, and it ain't always been good. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I've not been perfect, but I've been a believer in God since I was about, well, since I was born. I, was, I grew up in a Catholic family, so I always believed in God. But I've walked with him since I was about 21. I received him as my personal Lord and Savior. And, and I've, I've, I've had good times and I've had bad times. I've been obedient. I've been disobedient. I've learned. And I've cried and I've laughed and I've done everything there is to do with God. And God has been faithful to keep me in spite of all of it. But I need to be new in quality. Amen. I want to be new in quality. I can't be a new wineskin. I've been a believer since I was 21 years old. But I can be new in quality. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Now listen, in the English Standard Version of the Bible, and I believe that's kind of the best word-for-word -word trans translation, it reads, but new wine must be put into fresh wineskins. And I like, it can, be, it can mean refreshed wineskin. You see, they don't normally put new wine in old skins. They put it in new skins, but they can if the wineskins are refreshed. Amen? In ancient times, people made wine through fermentation or the process of aging wine. New, new unused wineskins, usually made from the skins of goats and lambs, were primary vessels for aging process. The new wineskins were filled with freshly cut, gra crushed grape juice and left to age for a period of time. Gas is formed within the wineskin as the flavor, color, balance, and boutique of the, of the wine grew. Because the wineskin was new, it could expand and hold both the wine and the gases. Amen? However, if some, uh, someone poured unfermented juice in an old wine skin, the forming gases caused the skin to burst. Amen? Because when the wine ferments, it, 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 it stretches the skin. And some of us have been stretched about as far as we can be stretched, you know. How many of you feel that way? <laughs> but I want to be refreshed. I want to be renewed. Amen? Old wine skins can be used again. So old wine skins is not thrown away, and it's, it's not only used to hold the old wine. It can be made fresh again to hold the new wine, and I want the new wine. I want the new wine, and I believe God wants us to have the new wine because he's doing a new thing in our time. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of change going on, and it's not just in this church. It's in churches all over the place. It's in churches everywhere where God is wanting to do the new thing and they're willing to listen and they're willing to be cleaned and they're willing to be oiled and they're willing to be changed. Amen? He's doing a new thing. Once a wine skin has been emptied of all the old wine, it becomes dry, hard, and brittle. And the wine skin needs to be cleaned by being submerged in water for a period of time. Then it has oil poured onto it and the oil is also massaged into the leather to renew it and make it pliable again. And once that's done, the new wine can be applied. Amen? You see, once the wine of our, old li our life's last season has been poured out, we enter a season of transition. We enter the process of renewal. Now, here's where I want to get to. Guys, you've been serving the Lord a while, most of you here. And you've been poured out. And sometimes it just we just get dry and we get brittle and we get unpliable and we, 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 we don't like change and we don't like things happening in our lives that just upset the balance and, and, and take us out of our comfort zones. But God is all about change. God is the God of today. He's the God of the future. I know the plans I have for you, but if you don't change, you can't get to those plans. God is a God of change. So the first thing we need to do in a transition period is to accept that God is wanting to bring change. And choosing to let go of the old is the first step. If you don't let go of the old, it's like that, that you know, you hold on to something, God can't put nothing in your hand. You've got to let it go so God can 
put something else in your hand. Amen? The first thing is to understand that God wants to bring change, and then you need to be willing to let go of what you know and what you have. Amen? Then after that, you need to be submerged in the water of the word. Amen? You need to get in the word of God. You need to get in. You need to read. You need to take your, your, your Bible study to a new level. Amen? And you need to be with Jesus, who is the Word, made flesh. Amen? It's time. It's time. It's time. And time is a quality. It, it, it's, 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 it's something uh, that we don't have a lot of quantity of anymore. You know, I was complaining that I, I didn't have time to pray and I was too tired in the evening because of all the labor of the day. And, you know, the Lord wasn't having it. He said, just get up earlier. And so I do. And, I, and I, I get to the church. And I'm telling you, I go out to the church before work. And it is the sweetest, exuberating time that I have. Sometimes I sit and just listen. Sometimes I give God an earful. But he already knew it anyway. But it's time. It's time spent. It's time spent. It's time spent reading the word. And then it's time spent after you've done reading and you go to work. You don't have to read anymore. Just think about what you read. Turn it inside. Put it inside. Let that water flow. Let that water wash out all of the old. Amen? All of the old ideas and the old ways. You see, but we, we, uh, we had this idea that we need to work out everything that's happening. What is God doing? What's God doing? I've seen this guy doing. What's God doing with that guy? Well, it doesn't matter what God is doing with that guy. What matters is what God is doing with you. Stop worrying about the next guy. What is God doing with you? But you don't even really need to worry about that in this phase. Just let God handle it. Soak it in. Just soak. Amen? Just soak in the water. Don't try to figure out what the future holds. Everybody wants to know what the future is. I mean, I spent so much time figure, trying to figure out my future, and God just went, Whoop. this is the way we're going. No, I'm going to go that way, Lord. I mean, he does it all the time. So why do we worry about it? Why do we spend the energy worrying about what God is doing, what's happening, and where we're going? God is already there. I mean, it took, it took forever for me to figure that out. And sometimes I've got that whisper in my ear. Don't you wonder? Shut up. God knows what he's doing. Amen? We don't need to figure it out. All we need to do is just soak. We just need to immerse ourselves in the word and in Jesus. And for a time, just soak. Be cleansed. Amen? And once you submit to that cleaning by the water of the word, God will begin to pour oil over you and a fresh anointing will be released over you and a new awareness of his presence and a fresh revelation and understanding of what he's doing in you and through you. But in his time, not yours. Amen? In his time, not yours. Not only does he pour the oil out, the Father will begin to massage it into you. Amen? He'll just massage that by the Spirit into you. And uh, I love what it says... He does this gently and sometimes not so gently. I had to put that in there. How many of you have ever had a time with God when he just, you, you needed some, <laughs> you needed some, 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 uh, some uh, sympathy? Huh? You wanted sympathy and you went to God, God, this is so hard. I'm, I'm doing all I can do, but I just can't. Why did that happen to me? I didn't, I didn't think I deserved that. Maybe I did, but I don't think I did, Lord. And, <laughs> I just don't understand why, why all this is happening. He says, shut up. And listen, I'm telling you from experience. I'm laying on the, li the living room floor crying about losing my job. God, I didn't deserve that. Well, maybe I did. Or maybe I didn't. But that really didn't matter. It happened, right? And I'm sitting down here and I'm, I'm crying about it. And God, I'm, I'm expecting him to just coddle me. And he says, shut up. I mean, just loud like that, and it stunned me. And he said, get up. Get up, that's right. He said, get up. And so I stood up, and he said, go finish that CD. And I was making my first music CD. And I said, well, God, yeah, that's good, but, uh, but uh, I ain't got a job. 
It costs money. Go finish that CD. So I, I, I left, I, I got out of the house because he was there and I, I needed to get out. And uh, <laughs> I walked to the lake in the back and I'm just standing back there and I'm just crying. I said, okay, God, I, I believe, I believe this is you telling me this. I don't know how it's going to happen, but I'm going to go, I'm going to finish that CD. So I didn't even worry about looking for a job or anything at that moment. I, I said, I'm going to finish that CD. That's what you told me to do. So anyway, I, I go to a prayer meeting. That was a couple of days later. And afterwards, the man there told me, he says, just said, I could tell you his name, but I don't, you wouldn't know him anyway. And he said, I, I got to talk to you. So everybody left. We were at the table, him and I. And he says, you know, God's been dealing with me for about a week now, two weeks. And it's time I obey him. He said he wanted me to give you this, and he slid a check across the table. Almost exactly what I needed to finish that CD, and he knew nothing. Amen. Don't worry about what God is doing. He's got it. He's got it. And you know what's so bad and what's so sad is even though I know this, sometimes I'm tempted to worry. Sometimes I'm tempted to worry about everything. But that's a temptation. Amen? You got to push it aside. And you got to believe that our God has a plan and he can work out his plan because he's God. Amen. 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 He may begin to speak to you and challenge you in your thinking. Maybe you got some stinking thinking like I had. You know, he's going to challenge you. He's going to say, is that really right? Are you really going to condemn that person? Are you really going to judge what they're doing? Because you really don't know what's going on with them. And you really don't know what I'm doing. You know, I tell everybody, our lives are like ropes. They're intertwined and they're tied in knots. And down here, there's another knot. And down here, there's another knot. And there's this giant knot down here. You know, it's kind of in the middle of everything, but there's a few knots here. Okay. And we're going over to this people and he says, you need to get that knot untied. There's something wrong, man. But that knot is way up here. And you got about five or six more down here that I don't see. He can't untie that knot until he unties the other knots. And God's working on the other knots because God can see. But I'm over here judging this man, so you ought to get that done. But he can't get it done yet. He might want to get it done, but he can't because his life is all knotted up down here. And God is working. And God is able to make him stand. You can't judge. Because you don't know. And if you think you know, don't do it anyway. Amen? You look at your life. You look at what God is doing in your life. You look at what God is saying, I want this. Well, God, let me give you that. No, I want this. God, take this away. But I will, but first you give me this. Because if you give me this, I can take that. There's just You've got to know what God is doing. Amen? In your personal life. And you got, he may lead you to step out and do some things that you've been dreaming about. But I'm too fearful. I'm afraid it ain't going to work. Well, what if it does? What if it does? Amen? He might get you to do some of those kind of things when you, but you know what? God's not going to pour new wine and skins that's not already for to receive it. If your skins aren't ready for God to pour the new wine in, don't expect any. Don't expect it. Why are you expecting new wine? God would be unloving and unkind if he gave you the new wine before your skin was ready. Why? Because you would break. And God don't want you to break. He loves you too much for you to break. He wants good things for your life. But if, he, if you're crying out for new wine, Lord, give me a new ministry. Lord, give me new this. Lord, give me a new that. Give me, you know, prepare your skins. That's what God is saying. I can't give you that. I want to give you that. You don't know how much I want to give you that, Mark, but I can't give you that. Because I love you too much for that. You see, Jeremiah says that God knows, I know, uh, God says, I know the, the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, give you a hope in the future. He's not going to harm you, so he's not going to give you the new wine if you're not ready for it. There's another lesson we can 
take from this, this parable that Jesus is talking about. So no one puts away, uh, puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment for the patch tears away from the garment and it's worse, a worse tear is made. We overlook this one a lot, but it's very important. You see, first of all, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and all those people are saying, why don't your, why don't your disciples fast? There they go, they're judging. Why don't, you, why don't your disciples fast? We fast, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm going to hear the Lord, and I'm thanking you that I'm not like that heathen over there, and I tithe on my mint and my deal and my, my income, and, you know, I'm not nothing like him, and I thank you that I'm nothing like you. You know, you know the story. The new cloth is like a new covenant. It's the new thing that Jesus came to do. And Jesus understood that they couldn't receive it because they were still full of old wine. And their wineskins weren't ready. They didn't want no change. They didn't want to stretch. They didn't want to learn new things. They weren't ready. In Hebrews 8, 12, 13, it says, For I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. He says, a new covenant I have made with, and he has made, when, when, uh, in that he says, a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete. I like this. And now what is obsolete is growing old and ready to vanish away. Amen. You can't patch the old covenant up with the new one. Amen. Can't do it. It's the same with your old life. Amen. The word says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. He's not just talking about sinfulness. Amen. That needs to pass away. It needs to be rooted out of us. But it's also our old concepts, what we think about things, how we understand things. God is always adjusting, always growing, because you see, God is so big. He says it this way, <laughs> if you don't believe me, he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. For higher are my thoughts than your thoughts, and higher are my ways than your ways. And you got a concept over here that you're not willing to let go of. But God wants to teach you his new thing, what he's doing. I've learned one thing. I, I tell people, I'll read the Bible, but I don't understand it. That's good. Keep reading it. I don't care if you understand it or not. Keep reading it. Keep putting the word in. Because you know what? Precept upon precept, line upon line. And pretty soon, when you start seeing it, it all starts coming together. The Holy Spirit brings into view everything that he's trying to teach you. But it takes time. You don't have all the pieces. If you were trying to put together a puzzle and you didn't have the missing pieces, what would you do? You got to get all the pieces. And then the Holy Spirit just opens it up to you. Amen. You got to get rid of those old ideas. The new cloth is Jesus. Now, you know what I'm fixing to say. We just can't patch up our old lives with Jesus. <laughs> Isn't that what we try to do? Lord, I'm... A I'm going to put Jesus on my bumper. But I'm still going to race around the next car and honk and, you know, you know what I'm saying. We try to pass up, we, you know, we just try to patch up our lives with Jesus. But that's not what he wants. That's not what he wants. Leviticus. <laughs> Leviticus says this in chapter 19. He says, you shall keep my statutes. You shall... Not let your cattle breed with different kind. You shall not, we do that all the time now, don't we? And you shall not sow in fields of two, or two kinds of seeds. And I think there's a lot of that cross pot planting. Anyway, it says, and nor shall you wear a garment of clothes made of two different kinds of material. Now, this is in Levitical law, okay? It's all passed away, all right? Surely God is not against us wearing cloths made of two kinds of material. I mean, I hope he's not because poor, poor women are going to be ironing them solid cotton shirts. <laughs> you know how bad they get. But God is not really talking about, in my opinion, he's talking about spiritual things. 
in today, in, in, as we look at it today. But spiritually speaking, he wants us to be completely in new clothes. He doesn't want to patch our old filthy garments with his new cloth, Jesus. But that's what we try to do. My righteousness is filthy rags. And I'm going to patch it up a little bit with Jesus. But it's still filthy rags. Amen. Think about it. Revelation 3, 15 and 16. I know your works. You're neither hot nor cold. Would that you were either hot or cold. But if you're not, uh, you're lukewarm. And I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. And there's one word that says the other. God wants us all. He wants all of us. He doesn't want us up walking around in patched up filthy rags. Amen. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 7 says this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, our God is the Lord. The Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all. How much of your heart? All your heart. All your soul. All your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Teach them to your kids. Walk in them. Amen. God also said in Mark 12, 30 and 31, when Jesus was asked, Lord, what's the greatest commandment? He said, you'll love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And seconds, like it, love your neighbor as yourself. All your heart. That's a big, tall call. Amen. He don't want you to patch your life up with Jesus. He wants you to have a new life. Amen. He don't want us walking around like that. He wants us to be new creatures. Amen. Ephesians 4, 20 through 24 says this. But that is not the way you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him. The truth, as the truth is in Jesus, to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through the deceitful desires and be renewed in the spirit of your minds and put on the new self created in the likeness of God. True righteousness and holiness. And you know the only way you can do that is to soak. Spend some time with God. You don't have the strength. I don't have the strength. I don't have the wisdom. I don't have everything that I need within myself to do those things. But God has given me all things pertaining to life and godliness if I'll just come sit at his table. Just got to sit at his table. He wants you to wear that garment of praise and the garment of salvation. Amen. That's the kind of garments he wants us to wear. New clothes. We're new creatures in Christ. Amen. So my question is, are you trying to patch up your, your old life with Jesus? Has that been something that you've been doing and really, maybe you didn't even realize it because I know I really didn't. I thought that's what I was supposed to do, add Jesus to what I already had. That's not the way it works. You got to die to self. You got to let the other die. Old things pass away. All things become new. Amen. You don't patch your life up with Jesus. Amen. Another question. Has the wine of your last session season been poured out and you find yourself brittle and dry? How many of you feel that way? Nobody? You still got some old wine? I'm just teasing. Well, if you do find yourself that way, are you willing to be cleansed and reconditioned? You got to submit yourself to it. He's a gentleman. God is a gentleman. He's not going to do what you don't allow him to do. He's not going to force it on you. He's not going to make us robots. My wife always gets on me because I always say robots. He's not going to make us robots. He wants us to freely come. Whosoever wills. Amen. Are you willing to be changed by what is new? 
Because believe me, just like that new wine poured in that old wine skin is going to change and stretch and change the shape of that skin. You are going to be changed by what's new, the new thing that God is doing. You willing to be changed by it or are you going to run from it? My wife and I, we went through some things here recently at our, at our church. It was difficult, but we didn't run. We hung in there. <laughs> it was tough. But you know, it wasn't all them. It wasn't all them. I ain't blaming them. It's those people over there. They're the ones that caused us to do it. It's all, no. There were some things God wanted to do in us. He was cleaning us. He was changing us. He was molding us and shaping us for the next season of our lives. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful I didn't run back to what was familiar. I stayed in the water. I soaked in the oil. I let him massage it in, and he wasn't always gentle. But the new wine is good. And I just barely getting a taste of it right now. He's still working on me. And I don't know. It's like the potter on the wheel. I'm going to just stay in the water. I'm going to stay in the oil. I want, I want him to do a new thing. I want him to do what he needs to do to make my vessel clean, pliable, and ready to be used in the next season of what he's doing. Because I'm telling you, God is fixing to do some incredible things. And I want to be used. So if you feel that way, just answer the invitation. Come sit at his table. Amen. God is calling you to sit at his table. <laughs> I changed the words just a little bit to reflect that he's telling us this. He said, I prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Come sit at my table. Come sit at my table. Whatever enemy you're facing, come sit at my table. I've got what you need. Because I've already been there and done that. I liken it like this. God is ahead of us. You know, he's, he's I'm, I'm going to walk way up the aisle here. He's, he's, he's walking way up here. Come on, come on, Mark. Come on, Mark. I got something for you. Come on, I got to move, move, move. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. Oh, oh. Oh, man. Where are you at, Mark? You ain't following me? Now we got to start all over again. And I got to reposition everything, and it's going to take you a little bit more time. Okay, let's go. You ready? How many times are we going to do that? How many times are we going to follow God to a certain point and say, I ain't going any farther. I want this for myself. This is mine. You're not messing with it. We do it. Don't do it. Don't do it because you will end up laying on that casket with not fulfilling what God has called you to do. Not finding the true joy, the true peace in life. Not being able to stand up against it when people do wrong to you. You know, what does he say? Bless and do not curse. All of that's found when we find the new wine. Amen. Come sit at my table. He says, and please remain seated until I make your enemies your footstool. Now listen to me. I'm about finished. You can't have it both ways. Banqueting with the master one day, this is message Bible, I love it. And slumming with the demons the next. Besides, the master won't put up with it. He, he wants us, all or nothing. Do you think you can get off with anything like that? You can't eat at both tables. You know? I mean, you can. You can go back and forth. You know? I don't know how, God, how long God allow it. I love it. God wants to make our enemies our footstool. And I think about what he said to Jesus. He said, he said this, he said, Come, 
sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. He tells Jesus, you come and you sit and I'm going to make your enemies your footstool. In another place, and I think it's in Peter, it says it's already been subject to him. Everything's already been subject to him. So what's the holdup? He's still sitting at the right hand of the Father. So evidently there's some more stuff that needs to be put under his feet. And I think I got it figured out. Maybe. He said, you and I are seated in heaven with Jesus. And God wants to make our enemies our footstool. And when we become everything that we're supposed to be, and when that last one has become subject to the Lord, uh, the Father, and when the last battle that needs to be won, the last enemy is, 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 is succumbs, and it's death, when all of that happens, then Jesus is going to get up off of his throne. And he's going to come sit with us. And everything will be subject to the Father as it should be. And until that day, you need to go sit. God's not going to pull you, push you in the chair. You need to sit. You need to soak. You need to be willing. And don't give up. The word says, if you faint not, you will reap. It's in his time, not yours, not mine. But God wants you to have the new wine. I want the new wine. I ain't going to lie to you. I mean, I like, I like a little glass of wine with my meal every once in a while. Be responsible. Don't get drunk. God don't want no drunkards. He said so. There's a lot of things that people misuse. Alcohol, sex. There's a lot of things that people misuse. Pharmaceutical drugs. Now all these things are good in themselves. Even Paul says that everything is, there's nothing sin in itself. He says all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful, but I won't be mastered by any of them. Amen? Amen? Don't be mastered. You had a problem with alcohol? Stay away from it. If God has taken you off of it and delivered you, don't you dare go back. Don't you dare. You had a sexual addiction? Don't go back. Don't click it. Whatever it is, don't go back. Amen? Be cleansed. Soak in the oil of the Holy Spirit. Be ready. Because God is fixing to pour out the new wine. Amen? Amen. Well, Father, we just love you. We praise you. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, that, uh, that you desire to give good things to your children. We just ask, Lord, that you would, you would bless us, Lord, that you would cause us to desire <laughs> to sit at your table to desire those good things, to desire uh, to walk away from all the things that keep us from you, Lord. I ask you to complete the work that you've begun at Brad's Valley Cowboy Church. Lord God, the way that this, this church is going, you know, you know the direction, you know what's going to happen, you know what plans you have, and you said it's plans to give them a hope and a future to prosper. Because it doesn't just affect Brazos Cow Cow Valley Cowboy Church. It affects the whole community at large. It affects the, the uh, tons of people, Lord, as each one has a domino effect. I'm asking you, Lord, to complete the work you've begun. And if need be, Lord God, <laughs> massage it in and make it rough if that's what it's going to take to, to knock off the old, to, 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 to cause us to, to, to be clean and to be prepared to receive the new wine, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for what the work you've already done, and I'm, and I'm looking forward to uh, what's with some reservation, what, what you're doing in the future, Lord, because I know 
that sometimes being pruned is not comfortable but it always produces more fruit we love you and we praise you and we thank you for for all your many blessings in Jesus name and if there's anybody who needs prayer after service we're going to stay up here and pray ask God for any of your requests and uh, I want to thank everybody on live stream for tuning in and uh, we love you and we just ask that you would come and visit and uh, see it, it's one thing to see it on a screen and it's another thing to feel the presence of God so come and come and share your time with us here we we surely appreciate it God bless you all anybody want to want to finish it yeah. well thank you Lord as we leave here this morning boy I don't know about you guys, but boy, my cup is filled up. You know, I, I, that's exactly what we're needing, Mark, is more is new wineskins to hold what God. And we see so many people want more and more of what God, and I'm not going to go into a message. I, the, but uh, but the, God's wanting to pour in, and, and, and we're not able to contain it. Maybe for a short period of time, then we end up going back. So I'd ask our prayer partners to come up here, uh, Candy and Jake, if y'all would come up here. This morning, Teresa, come up here. We're going to pray this morning. If there's a need that you have that that you need to just pray and just, uh, I talked to Brian. Man, he's uh, he was over in uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, somewhere. Got hurt. Man, God's just. Well, I believe God's going to heal his back. He's a warrior. He's a patriot, and God is going to honor that. So if there's if there's anyone here this morning that needs prayer, come up and let us pray over you. Come expecting this morning, Mark. Good word, brother. Good word. That's what we need, man. And just more wine skin, new wine skin. Oh, the old and Mark, y'all, y'all come up here. So as we leave here this morning, we want to thank everybody for being here. Be blessed. Have a good week. Just remember, every day is a day that the Lord has made. And what does it say, Larry? Be glad and rejoice in it. You know. And I don't know about you guys, but when I get up in the morning, I tell God, I'm going to have a good day today. No matter what happens, I'm going to have a good day today. In Jesus' name, be blessed. We're dismissed, and hey, yo, you guys, if y'all can, on Wednesday nights, come, because it has really been a powerful teaching. It's one thing to get, you know, preach and get built up, but then in the on Wednesday night, it's, a, it's just a good, solid teaching time and uh, to grow. So be blessed. Brian, come expect.